I found them. Professor. Bobby. Hey, son. Hey, kid. 
Professor, you made it. Whenever the Sentinels attack, Warpath spots them. And I send Bishop back to warn us of the attack before it happens. Bring scouts to the next site, and... Well, then we leave before they ever know we were there. Because... we never were. So what do you mean, you were never there? She projects Bishop back in time a few days to warn the others of the coming attack. So she sends Bishop back in time? No, just his consciousness. Into his younger self, his younger body. Well... This might just work, Charles. What might work? The Sentinel program was originally conceived by Dr. Bolivar Trask. In the early 70s, he was one of the world's leading weapons designers. But, covertly, he had begun experimenting on mutants, using their gifts to fuel his own research. There was one mutant who had discovered what he was doing. A mutant with the ability to transform herself into anyone. Mystique. I knew her as Raven. We met when we were children, grew up together. She was like a sister to me. I tried to help her, but only succeeded in driving her away. She hunted Trask across the world, and at the Paris Peace Accords in 1973, after the Vietnam War, she found Trask and killed him. was the first time she killed him. It wasn't her last. But killing Trask did not have the outcome she expected. It only persuaded the government of the need for his program. They captured her that day, tortured her, experimented on her. In her DNA, they discovered the secrets to her powers of transformation. It gave them the key they needed to create weapons that could adapt to any mutant power. And in less than 50 years, the machines that have destroyed so many of our kind were created. And it all started that day in 1973. The day she first killed. The day she truly became Mystique. Do you want to go back there? If I can get to her, stop the assassination, keep her out of their hands, then we can stop the Sentinels from ever being born. And end this war before it ever begins. I can send someone back in a couple weeks. Maybe a month, but you're talking about going back decades. You have the most powerful brain in the world, Professor, but the mind can only stretch so far before it snaps. It would rip you apart. I'm sorry. No one could survive that trip. What if someone's mind has a way of snapping back? What if someone can heal as fast as it ripped apart? up in my younger body, God knows where, then what? You'll need to go to my house and find me. Convince me of all of this. Won't you be able to just read my mind? I didn't have my powers in 1973. Logan, you're going to have to do for me what I once did for you. Lead me, guide me. I was a very different man then. You'll have to be patient with me. Patience is my strongest suit. You'll need me as well. What? After Mystique left Charles, she came with me, and I set her on a dangerous path. Darker path. It's going to take the two of us. Side by side at the time, and we couldn't be further apart. Great. Where do I find you? Well, it's complicated. Basically, your body will go to sleep while your mind travels back in time. And as long as you're back there, past and present will continue to coexist. Once you wake up, whatever you've done will take hold and become history. And for the rest of us, it'll be the only history that we know. It'll be like the last 50 years never happened. In this world, in this war, the only person who will remember it is you. 
All right, Logan, I need you to clear your head and to stay as calm as possible. What? What do you mean? If your mind gets rocky, it'll be harder for me to hold you. You could start to slip between past and future. What if I need to get a little rocky? Do you have peaceful thoughts? Peaceful thoughts? Do you have any good news? Oh. Well, I mean, you don't really age, so you'll pretty much look the same. We won't have much time in Paris. The sentence will find us. They always do. And this time we won't be able to run. We'll have no escape. This is our last chance. You really think this will work? I have faith in him. It's all he had learned about it since. We were young. We didn't know any better. We will now. See you soon. This might sting a little. What's going on? When? Uh, who are you? Get dressed. Hey, I don't know what's going on. What's going on is it's supposed to be guarding the boss's daughter, not screwing you. Uh, I didn't sleep with her. No. No. I mean, yes, I slept with her many times, but... Timmy! That wasn't me. That was the old me. I just got here like 20 seconds ago. Really? Yeah. And what happened to your clothes? My, oh. Would you believe me if I told you I was sent here from the future? <laughs> Get out of here, sweetheart. Yeah. I'm gonna take care of this comedian. No, you're not. You're gonna give me the keys to your car and some money for gas, or you're gonna wake up in the hospital. Trust me, I know how these things play out. Oh, because you're from the future? No. Because of these. What the hell? <laughs> reviewing all of our defense expenditures and all the black books are being opened we can't support a weapon that targets our own citizens if these mutants as you describe are already living among us then they are living here peacefully we haven't had an incident in over 10 years after what happened in cuba that was never confirmed we have very real enemies out there the russians the chinese we are talking about a tenth of a tenth of a tenth of our population allow me to read something to you please this was acquired by our friends at the CIA. It's a dissertation written by a mutant at Oxford University. And I quote, To Homo Neanderthalensis, his mutant cousin, Homo sapiens, which is us, was an aberration. The arrival of the mutated human species, Homo sapiens, was followed by the immediate extinction of their less evolved kin. Well, now we are the Neanderthal. Speak for yourself, Dr. Trask. You know, when you sent our soldiers to Vietnam without the weapons they needed to win the war, you underestimated your enemy. <laughs> you do that with this enemy. Mm. It won't be some border skirmish halfway around the world. 
This time the war will be for our streets, our cities, our homes. And by the time you see the need for my program, it'll be too late. And you will have lost two wars in one lifetime. We're sorry, Dr. Trask. But your Sentinel program, it ain't gonna fly. Can I help you, Colonel? Just here to give our boys a proper send-off. Sorry, sir, but we have orders. This is a quarantined area. Stand aside, soldier. That's an order. At ease. What is all this? Lab reports, blood tests. It's all getting packed up and shipped back. Where is it going? Same place they are. Trask Industries. Let's go, Dylan. Taking you out of this shit show. Shipping home? Not just yet. What are you doing with those? Something to make the ride a little smoother. I'm transferring you to a private facility where we can run a few more tests. Your men are not military. Private outfit. We're authorized to remand these men. These troops are going home. Well, Colonel, I don't believe you have jurisdiction in this matter. I'm afraid I do, son. I'm sorry, who are you? The question is, Major. Who are you? not my name. I have that. I know. Let's move out. Come on, let's go. Where's Erin? I'm on my own now. Where'd they go? Yeah, what happened to the school? The school's been shut for years. Are you a parent? Sure as hell hope not. Who are you? I'm Hank. 
I can quietly look after the house now. You're a beast? Look at you. I guess you're a late bloomer. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm not going to ask you to leave. <coughs> so where's the professor? There's no professor here. You're pretty strong for a scrawny kid. Uh, are you sure there's not a little beast in here? Yeah. Come on, beast. He's not here. Come on, beastie. Oh. <coughs> hey. I said the school's closed. You need to leave. Not until I see the professor. There's no professor here. I told you that. Look, kid. You and I are going to be good friends. <coughs> you just don't know it yet. Professor! <coughs> Professor! Yeah, you look slightly familiar. Get off the bloody chandelier, Hanks. You can walk. You're a perceptive one. That's all very. I find it slightly perplexing that you managed to miss our sign on the way in. This is private property, my friend. I'm going to have to ask him to ask you to leave. Well, uh, I'm afraid I can't do that because, uh, because I was sent here for you. Well, tell me whether it was that sent you. That I'm busy. Uh, it's going to be a little tricky because the person who sent me was you. What? About 50 years from now. 50 years from now? Like in the future, 50 years from now? Yeah. I sent you from the future? Yeah. Piss off. If you had your powers, you'd know I was telling the truth. How do you know I don't have my... Who are you? I told you. You CIA? No. You've been watching me? I know you, Charles. We've been friends for years. I know your powers came when you were nine. I know you thought you were going crazy when it started, all that voices in your head, and it wasn't until you were 12 that you realized all the voices were in everyone else's head. Do you want me to go on? I never told anyone that. Not yet, no, but you will. Oh, you've piqued my interest. What do you want? We have to stop raving. I need your help. We need your help. What do you have to do with this? So, you're saying that they took Raven's power and what? They weaponized it? Yep. She is unique. Yeah, she is, Hank. Look, in the beginning, the Sentinels were just targeting mutants. When they began to identify the genetics in non-mutants, they would eventually have mutant children or grandchildren. Many of the humans tried to help us. It was a slaughter leaving only the worst of humanity in charge. I've been in a lot of wars. I've never seen anything like this. And it all starts with her. Look, let's just say that for the sake of... the sake that I choose to believe you, that I choose to help you, Raven won't listen to me. And her heart and soul belong to someone else now. I know. That's why we're gonna need Magneto, too. You do know where he is. Yeah. <laughs> He's where he belongs. Well, I said you're just gonna walk out? Oh, top marks. Like I said, you are perceptive. The professor I know would never turn his back on someone who lost their path. Especially someone he loved. You know, I think I do remember you now. Yeah. We came to you a long time ago seeking your help. And I'm going to say to you what you said to us then. Fuck off. Listen to me, little shit. I've come a long way. I know watched a lot of people die, good people and friends. You can only wallow in self-pity and do nothing. Then you're going to watch the same thing, you understand? We all have to die sometime. I told you there was no professor here. What the hell happened to him? He lost everything. Eric, Raven, I mean his legs. We built the school, the labs, this, this whole place. Then, just after the first semester, the war in Vietnam got worse. Many of the teachers and all the students were drafted. I mean, it broke him. He retreated into himself. I, 
I wanted to help do something, so I designed a serum to treat his spine, you know, derived from the same formula that helps me control my mutation. I take just enough to keep myself balanced, but he takes too much. I tried to ease him back, but he just couldn't bear the pain. I was his... The treatment gives him his legs, but it's not enough. He's... He's just lost too much. I'll help you get her. Not for any of your future shite, but for her. Fair enough. I'll tell you this, you don't know Eric. That man is a monster, a murderer. You think you can convince Raven to change? To come home? That's splendid. But what makes you think you can change him? Because you and Eric sent me back here together. The room they were holding him in was built during the Second World War when there was a shortage of steel, so the foundation was pure concrete and sand, no metal. He's being held a hundred floors beneath the most heavily guarded building on the planet. Why is he in there? Oh, he forgot to mention. That's JFK. He killed. <laughs> what else explains a bullet miraculously curving through the air? Eric's always had a way with guns. Are you sure you want to carry on with this? Yeah, this is your plan, not mine. We don't have any resources to get us in there. All out. It's just me and Hank. I know a guy. Yeah, he'd be a young man now. Grew up outside of D.C. <laughs> he could get into anywhere. Just don't know how the hell we're gonna find him. I guess he'll leave it out of the question. We have a phone book. I thought you'd be getting ready for your trip, sir. I just came to grab a couple files. Is that a new scarf? It's nice. Thank you. some names to a Paris meeting. Thank you. I is something wrong, sir? No. It's nothing. Would you mind typing up my itinerary? I don't want to miss anything. I don't know. I'll just write you a check for whatever you took. We just need to talk to him. Peter, the cops are here again. We 
get what? I didn't do anything. I've been here all day. Relax, Pete. We're not cops. Of course we're not cops. If we were cops, you wouldn't be driving a rental car. How'd you know we're rental car? I checked your registration when you were walking through the door. I also had some time to kill, so I went through your rental agreement until you're from out of town. Are you FBI? <laughs> no, you're not cops. Hey, what's with this Gibson Yuncher's place? That's an old car. Well, he's fascinating. He's a pain in the ass. What, a teleporter? No, he's just fast. When I know him, he wasn't so young. Young? You're just old. So you're not afraid to show your powers? Powers? What powers? What are you talking about? Is there something strange here? Nothing anybody would believe if you told them. <laughs> so who are you? And what do you want? We need your help, Ethan. What? Break into a highly secure facility and to get someone out. Prison break? That's illegal, you know. Uh, well, only if you get caught. So what's in it for me? You, the kleptomaniac, get to break into the Pentagon. How do I know I can trust you? Because we're just like you. Sure. It's cool when you're still fast. Built in 1943, the Pentagon is the world's largest office building, housing more than 25,000 military employees, stretched over 6 million square feet. Well, lucky for you, you'll have friends to choose from. The building was constructed during segregation. Yeah, we're getting broadcast signal down here. What's going on? Damn it. Call maintenance. Get him down here. In three seconds, those doors are going to open. And 20 guards will be here to shoot us. Hang on. That's what I'm waiting for. What are you doing? I'm holding an exit onto Whiplash. What? Whiplash. Serious. What'd you do, man? 
What'd you do? What'd you do? Why'd they have you in there? For killing the president. They really think I'm guilty of this. Fighting for people like us. You take karate? You know karate, man? I don't know karate. But I know crazy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is a code red situation. We are evacuating the entire floor so that we, my uh, associate and I, can uh, secure the prison. Who are you? We are Special Operations CBFECID. Look, I you didn't hear me when first I spoke, but it's imperative that you understand we are in complete lockdown situation. We have to get you to the third floor. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Are you finished? They told me you controlled metal. Okay. You know, my mom once knew a guy who could do that. Sorry, I'm just not very good with violence. Charles. Good to see you too, old friend. And walking. No thanks to you. I'm the last person in the world I expected to see today. Believe me, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have to. If we get you out of here, we do it my way. No killing. No helmet. I couldn't disobey you even if I wanted. I'm never getting inside of that head again. I need your word, Eric. Somebody move! Hold it right there! Charles. Don't move. Hands up, or we will shoot. Freeze him, Charles. I come. Hands up. If I could say time in a bottle, the first thing that I'd like to do. Save every day till eternity passes away Just to spend them with you If I could make days last forever If words could make wishes come true I'd save every day like a treasure And then again I would spend them with you there never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do once you find them. I've looked around enough to know you're the one I want to go through time with. Thank you very, very much. You take care. Hey, I saw your flight plan in the cockpit. Why are you going to Paris? Imagine if they were metal. Do me a favor and return it for me. Okay, and Peter? Take it slow. Why did they dig you up? You're going to find this hard to believe, but uh, you sent me. You and Charles, from the future. How did you lose them? The treatment for my spine affects my DNA. Sacrificed your power so you could walk. I sacrificed my power so that I could. What do you know about it? I lost my fair share. Huh. Dry your eyes, Eric. It doesn't justify what you've done. You've no idea what I've done. I know that you took the things that mean the most to me. Well, maybe you should have fought harder for them. 
If you want to fight Eric, I sit will down. give you a fight. Let him come. You abandoned me. You took her away and you abandoned me. Angel. Azaza. Emma. Banshee. Mutant brothers and sisters, all dead. Countless others experimented on, butchered. Eric, where were you, Charles? We were supposed to protect them. Where were you when your own people needed you? Hiding. You and Hank, pretending to be something you're not. Eric. You abandoned us all. survivor. Want to pick all that shit up? Ngày mai ông tham gia hai nghĩ thanh niên ai hát? Chà, một cô gái xinh đẹp như thế lại quan tâm đến chuyện chính trị. Em ngoái mà, vậy làm thế thôi. Vậy thì. Show me more, baby. Close off. What's the matter, baby? You don't think I look pretty like this? <laughs> Fancy a game? It's been a while. Not one of those games, thank you. I haven't had a real sip in ten years. I didn't kill the president. The bullet curved Eric. Because I was trying to save him. They took me out before I could. Why would you try and save him? Because he was one of us. <sighs> you must think me so foolish. You've always said that they would come after us. I never imagined they'd use Raven's DNA to do it. When did you last see her? The day I left for Dallas. How was she? Strong. Driven. Loyal. How? How was she? 
truth in my life. I could see why she meant so much to you. You should be proud of her, Charles. She's out there fighting for our cause. Your cause. Well, I realized she was not capable of caring to raise her. You grew up with her. She couldn't stay a little girl forever. That's why she left. She left because you got inside her head. That's not my power. She made a choice. But now we know what that choice leads, don't we? She's going to murder Trask. They're going to capture her. And then they're going to wipe us out. Not if we get to her first. Not if we change history tomorrow. I'm sorry, Charles. For what happened, I truly am. It's been a while since I played. <clears throat> I'll go easy on you. Might find a good fair fight. You have the first move. Diplomats from all around the world are arriving here today at the Hotel Royale. It's a historic day as the uh, official ending of the United States military involvement in Vietnam. Now we have the South Vietnamese Foreign Minister with other South Vietnamese dignitaries. The summit doesn't begin for another hour. The hotel's arranged a private room upstairs for your special guest. That'll be plenty of time. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Thank you for coming. Congratulations on winning this war. Now, I know you all have hands to shake and photos to take downstairs, so I will get right to the point. There is a new enemy out there. An enemy that will render your arsenals useless, your armies powerless, and your nations defenseless. You'll need a new weapon for this war. I call them Sentinels. Named after the ancient guardians that stood at the gates of the Citadel. They have the aeronautic capabilities of a Harrier jet. Armed with guns that can fire off more than 2,000 rounds per minute of thermo-ceramic ammunition. But size, power, speed, you could find that at Lockheed or Boeing. No, what makes the Sentinel so special is the ability to target the Mutant X gene. A genetic guidance system that can lock onto a mark a half a mile away and won't trigger unless it's identified the target. With this weapon, there will be no human collateral damage. If I turn it on, the system couldn't even activate in here. Unless there's a new change. I don't. There has to be some kind of mistake. My machines don't make mistakes. I don't. Tuesday, mate. What are you? Tuesday. I assure you, well. I. No, don't shoot it. I assure you. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Tuesday, mate. Push it back. future. Forgive me, Mystique. As long as you're out there, we'll never be safe. Eric. Use your power, Charles. Stop him. He can't. <laughs> He's 
To us. Who are you? Charles. Oh, Charles or Xavier? I don't know you. Huh? What the hell is that? Oh, 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 I can deal with this. Just go. Stop, Eric. Hey, hey. Sorry. Xavier, you spent the last couple of days with us. You're on acid. Somebody gave you really bad acid. Yeah? Raven. Go on. Why? We have to get out of here. I want to know if there's any sort of connection. <laughs> Yesterday, the Paris Peace Summit was rocked by the appearance of unidentified assailants. A light of which the world has never seen. Mass hysteria has gripped the nation as people ask, where do they come from? Will they be back? And most importantly, are they friend or foe? That was London correspondent Toby Elliott reporting from the Paris Peace Summit. What the hell are we dealing with here? Off the record. Two days ago, this man, Eric Lencher, escaped from a maximum security prison inside the Pentagon. We believe that this woman is a former associate of Lencher's. They were together in Cuba the day of the crisis in 62. He was also implicated in Kennedy's assassination. What about that thing? We don't know what that thing is, sir. Actually, we really don't know what any of them are. Yes. Yes, we do. They're mutants. He has 
the power to control metal. Last I checked, that's what most of your weapons were made of. And she can transform into anyone. A general, a secret serviceman, even you, Mr. President. She could walk into this office and order a nuclear strike if she was in the mood. And that's only two of them. Well, do we have any countermeasures? Any defense? I was waiting for you to ask me that question. That's an experimental program, sir. Strictly off the books. You're telling me these mutants are out in the world, and our best defense are these giant metal robots? Many of the mutants look like us. My sentinels can tell the difference. I have eight prototypes ready to go. They're built out of a space-age polymer, not an ounce of metal on them. I want to make a demonstration. I want the world to know that we can protect them. What do you need to get these things operation? I already gave that number to Congress. Unfortunately, they elected to shut me down. It's going to cost a bit more to turn them on. Whatever you need. Oh, and one more thing. If we do manage to capture them, I would like her. For research purposes, of course. Pardon? Pardon? Pouvez-vous vous imaginer faire face à un miroir?